Hey guys, John here with NitroPlanes.com. Thanks for joining us for another installment of our FPV series. Okay, getting into OSDs. OSD is an acronym loosely thrown around in the FPV community. It stands for On Screen Display. And what that pretty much means is a heads up display or a HUD display or a uh, second overlay over your actual video with vital information. Now I've got a few different OSDs here and OSDs range very broadly. You can get into a very inexpensive $10 OSD all the way up to a four and $500 OSD. OSDs do all different types of functions and OSDs also do other things besides on-screen display. For example, you can get an OSD or an on-screen display system that can actually control the aircraft. It has a return to home feature. It has a stabilization feature. It offers um, waypoints and different things of that nature in the OSD itself. So talking a little bit about the ones that I've, I have here in front of me, I'll start with the lowest, most basic OSD. This is a very, very simple OSD and its only sole purpose is to give you your battery voltage and the time you've been powered on. So the second you activate your aircraft or turn on the OSD, it will start a timer and it will also overlay the information of your voltage. This particular OSD can tell you two different voltages. So if you've got, for say, a flight pack that controls your motors and another pack that controls your FPV uh, equipment, you can monitor both equipment with a small little compact OSD. And this is just about the size of a stamp. Getting into a little bit more complicated OSD, I've got the GOSD here. Now this OSD is the same, roughly the same size as this OSD. However, it can give you more information. This one, for example, can give you um, your battery voltage. It can also do RSSI, which is range signal strength for your uh, RC control. So as you start moving farther and farther out of control, it'll give you a percentage of how much radio signal you have or how much control you have left. And attached to it is a GPS. Now, a basic OSD like this one just gives you voltage and uh, timer. The second you add a GPS, you get a whole other world of vital information. You can have things like airspeed, you can, uh, I'm sorry, uh, ground speed, um, altitude, your distance from home, your distance traveled, and which direction you are. It actually has a built-in compass. It can also give you a return to home arrow, which will essentially, if you're out long distance, it will tell you which direction to turn to head towards home. Now this OSD is not very accurate. Getting into a little bit more higher o end OSD, this is the GOSD3. Again, it's uh, roughly the same size as the tiny little one, just a little bit bigger. It has a much better GPS uh, that, that refreshes at 10 hertz per second. And this one can also add a current sensor. I'm gonna go into this OSD. It's one of my favorite OSDs. This is the Cyclops Breeze OSD. It's the most simple OSD you can get. It's not very expensive. Um, however, this one gives you a lot, a lot of information. First thing, you've got pins here on uh, one side and pins on the other side. You'll basically, on any OSD, um, whether it be the simple one or a more complicated one, you'll have a video in Put, which basically is the live feed from your camera going into the OSD. Then you'll have a video output, which will go to your video transmitter. Now what the OSD does is it takes the video information and then it processes all the data that we just talked about, overlays it onto the video feed and shoots it out to your video transmitter of choice. This OSD also has a current sensor. It can do all the same things as uh, the one with the GPS. However, you've got a current sensor. So now you can see your current cons consumed, you can see your milliamps consumed, and your uh, battery life left. So having an OSD can be a very vital, important feature of FPV. However, it is not necessary. If you're just getting into FPV and you want to just try it out and start off with uh, flying an aircraft FPV, I strongly suggest skip the complication of an OSD and just put a camera and a transmitter on an aircraft and get yourself a monitor or goggles. However, if you do get goggles, make sure you have a spotter there to take over control. Don't go farther than you, than you uh, understand of the area find yourself a nice wide open area and keep close. Don't go more than a couple hundred feet away from you because uh, it's very easily, very easy to get disoriented. However, if you want to get into a little bit more extreme FPV, an OSD is a great addition to your FPV system. If you want to shoot out and go a little bit farther range or if you want to try uh, exploring the areas around you, an OSD would be a very, very important tool in helping you get back to your location safely. All right, so we've talked about many of the different components. And if you guys have a specific 
uh, unit that you guys want checked out or whatnot, go ahead and get online and just go on the RC Groups forums or on the uh, um, FPV lab forums and just research the different ones and find out which one's the best for you, which one fits your budget, which one fits your aircraft, and which one is easy to program and uh, easy to set up. So going back to the different equipment that we talked about, your basic system, FPV system, is a video camera that sends a live video feed through a video transmitter. I've got two different video transmitter here just to try to help us um, figure out the wiring and whatnot. Then later you add the OSD. So I've set them up here on my table to kind of show you the path that happens. So the live video feed comes in, you can feed them through an OSD and then out the video transmitter, or you can wire them directly to your video transmitter and skip the OSD altogether. A couple things to mention is when you're doing FPV, learning to solder is a very, very important part of FPV. Uh, not only is it important for you guys to learn how to solder and do this stuff, it's also very cost effective. If you don't know how to solder, you're going to have a hard time and uh, you're going to be very limited on products that you can purchase that are uh, ready to go or plug and play, for example. You're going to have to go with a lot of proprietary stuff. But if you learn to solder, you can kind of mix and match different things to your liking. All right, guys, thanks for watching another episode. Uh, if this video helped you out, don't forget to hit the like button. And I uh, hope I simplified things for you, gave you a couple tips and tricks to get your FPV system set up. Uh, again, if you guys want a chance to win a shirt, click here, which will take you over to my channel. There'll be instructions on how to win that shirt there. And as always, I'm Johnny with nitroplanes.com. Thanks for watching. On the nose of your aircraft or somewhere in a forward uh, position. Now, if we want to Im imply and add a OSD, with our system set up with the standard servo plugs, makes things very, very simple. For example, this Cyclops OSD here has three pin connectors, as you can see. If I flip it over, if you just simply look on the bottom, you can see AVN, which is our camera. It says signal plus minus. I know, for example, this Cyclops Storm.